He actually got a technical foul at the Salt Palace from the sideline. He was a fan. Good for him because it should be fun, too. I don't remember a general manager still to this day getting a technical foul. Having overseen many of the church basketball games in which he played in, we can, I can clearly understand why he got a technical foul. Very fiery guy, very competitive guy, very passionate guy. NBA Commissioner David Stern recognized those qualities several years earlier when Chekets was working for a Boston consulting firm. I probably uh, deemed it to be the highest of priorities to get people the caliber of Dave Chekets associated with our league. Stern asked Chekets what he thought of the Utah Jazz. I told David Stern, that's the worst franchise in any sport. Three weeks later, I was named president of the team. Chekets was 27 years old, the youngest chief executive in NBA history. I was impressed right away. I mean, here's a fellow who, he has a good education and he shows it. The Jazz had gone their first nine years without a winning season. One of the first moves was to encourage Frank Layden to spend money on players. Because the only thing they had done so far there was to, to try to keep the payroll down. So they'd sold players like Dominique Wilkins, who they drafted. And I said, Frank, you know, if we're going to be in the professional basketball business, we're going to try to win. The Jazz made their first playoff appearance in 1984, the very next season. The Jazz won more games per dollar than any team in professional sports. But Chekhet's presence was about more than just expert number crunching. He was somebody that looked for everybody to succeed, not just himself. His ego didn't get in the, in the way of his goals. We caught those traits on display 20 years ago, while in the midst of a player trade discussion with NBA legend and then Sacramento GM, Bill Russell. Well, I, I thought you would be very tempted by that. Is it because you don't like me personally, Bill? <laughs> I just thought I'd ask, you know. If Dave Checkets had stayed with the Jazz, we would have a championship ring by now. Salt Lake City's loss would be New York City's game. After seven years in Utah, he headed back east where he was asked to bring the magic back to Madison Square Garden. Revenue soon hit record levels, and the Knicks would make two trips to the finals for the first time in two decades. By the end of the 90s, Chekets had made a permanent mark on the New York sports scene and was about to realize yet another goal. My long-term goal was never to work for anyone ever again. I just didn't want to take a chance again that I would go turn around another club and end up building it in such a way that the owner just loved it so much that they wanted to do the job. That led to the creation of SCP Worldwide and a return to his home state. I didn't know much about soccer. I just knew that uh, the league thought that Salt Lake City would be a great place to build a team. I assure you one thing, it will not have two Z's anywhere in the name. <laughs> After I wrote the check, I said, uh, this will either be the greatest mistake or maybe the greatest victory uh, of my life. We're going to build a stadium for the ages right here in Sandy, Utah. <laughs> the political battle to build the stadium was uh, the most painful personal experience I've ever been through. He didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't, he didn't uh, take his toys and say, well, I'm out of here. No. He, he took what, what turned out to be very attractive to him. I think that's some of the things people misunderstood, too, in coming to Utah, was they saw this kind of slick New Yorker. The fact is, is that, uh, that that's a misrepresentation. It, he really is a very, uh, he's very trustworthy. I mean, what he says, he does. And I think that's been proven out. If he sets his sight on something and decides that it's a worthy target, yeah, he'll probably hit it. I'd never bet against him, never. As we say once and for all, that Real Salt Lake is a permanent part of this Utah community. McDonald in front with Oshie. Here's McDonald's He scores! Check its reach has extended to hockey, where the St. Louis Blues went from the worst team in the NHL when he bought them to a spot in the playoffs three years later. We're going to keep building uh, with a perspective that um, we want, to, we want to run the best clubs in the world. He's becoming a dynamo in the sports world, you know? 
He's not, he's, not that, he's not that little blonde kid I saw walking into the, uh, the Waldorf Astoria in New York. No, now he is a force in professional sports. The man with that force has also found the time for a wife, six children, and now four grandchildren. Never an absentee father. Uh, he always put aside Sundays as a family day. Even when there was an important game seven in the garden against a rival opponent, I was not there. I stayed home. Now me and my kids were watching it on television. But those are some of our favorite memories. We spent that time at, at home. And uh, you know, I, I grew up playing sports like, like a lot of kids in Little League and Pop Warner and basketball and he was always there. You know, so he worked very hard, continues to work very hard, but uh, he was always able to find that balance and continues to to this day. He has Real Salt Lake, the St. Louis Blues, the arenas that house them and many other media holdings but those don't appear to be the holdings that matter most. I have six great children. I have, uh, they love each other, they love their parents. We love being together and uh, that is my greatest happiness.